Hi, I'm Marcy Merrill from JunkStoreCameras.com and MerrillPhoto.com and I'm going to show you how to hand tint a print using oil paints and I'm going to dive right in because I hate it when I turn on a video and somebody's talking about the day they were born and all I really want to do is learn how to fix my bike chain. Anyway, um, I'm working on a fiber-based print today. Um, I'll talk more about print stuff probably in a different video. But anyway, I've got uh, my oil paints right here, a big old blob of them. And what I used as a palette is a white plate. And uh, <laughs> used to be white. Anyway, it's a white plate. And I squeeze out some paint, obviously. And here's, oh, I know what, I'll start out with a really good tip right away. To save these paints, they'll they'll dry out just like this. You get yourself a Tupperware container. It's a, like a pie holder thing. Put it in there, seal it up, and put it in the freezer. That'll make your paints last a lot longer. They won't harden up quite as quickly. So anyway, we're going to start out using these cotton balls. Um, I used to buy this medical roll. I still have some here. They're really expensive, and it was all cotton. It's really nice stuff. But then, but that was pretty pricey. Then I found at Dollar Store you can get a whole bag of 100% cotton, cotton balls. Um, a lot of times people, especially if you have just a few colors you're going to just wipe on, they'll take this, it's called PM Solution, and it's kind of a conditioner for your paints. They'll take it and they'll wipe it all over the whole print and then paint in there. And that's not really how I do it unless I'm, like I said, had just a few colors to do. Anyway... This, you're going to screw up on this your first time. This PM solution, you want just a teeny tiny bit. Maybe you won't screw up. Maybe you'll be smart. All right. Head back on because that stuff doesn't smell good. Let me get my, get my cheaters. All right. So I got a little bit on that cotton. And um, I'm going to start at the top. Is I want to start at the top because I'm, if I put my hand down this way, I don't want to be dragging my hand through the paint that I'm already putting on. There we go. Put just a little bit of color on. And the cool thing about oils is you don't really have to worry too much about getting staying in the lines. You kind of do if you want to, but it's uh, it's very easy to fix things, to repair areas. If you screw up, you put the wrong color on, or you don't like it being that thick, it's really, really easy to take it back off or blend it. Very easy to blend. Way easier than using dyes or watercolors. You're kind of, you got to really work hard with those. Okay, so I'm going to set that over there. Go to another color. I'm still working with the cotton balls. We'll get to my arsenal of skewers and things in just a minute. But, okay, back to the PM. And sometimes I could use the other side of that same cotton ball that I just had, but sometimes I don't. I just want a little bit of depth in there with my reds. Oh, and I know what, now I'll use the other side of this. Oh. This part of this video is really boring. Alright. Brand new clean cotton ball. Smooth it around. That's kind of way colory for me, but that's okay. This is a cotton ball that's just clean without the PM solution. And these, the, the oils that I'm using, I use a lot of Marshall's oils. Um, I have a variety. People tend to give me stuff. I don't know why. I have a lot of different kinds of oils, and I have certain colors that I like more than others. PM Solution is a Marshalls product. You can get all this stuff on eBay for a song anymore. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, so see where I went over the lines? Here, I'll show you. Because you probably can't see from over there. See all that junk? Well, you take one of these. It's a kneadable eraser. Like that. Kneaded rubber, it says. Hmm. And I can clean out these areas here with that kneaded rubber. You just turn the dirty part back inside of it. 
Let me clean it up. Clean up the edges. Clean, clean, clean. You get the idea. Like that. And now I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I want to do a little bit of green in these little roof areas and places around the windows. So, here we come to my skewers. This is going to change your life. You take a little bit of this cotton, just a tiny bit, excuse all the paint in my fingernails, but you take a tiny bit of cotton, you wrap it around the skewer and you spin that skewer while you pinch the cotton really tight and you kind of shape it too. You don't want to have that skewer, the point of the skewer sticking out there. You don't want to scrape your print. Sorry about all my little, I got paint up my fingernails. All right, I'll get on there. You make, up, make a bunch of those ahead of time, so you'll have a bunch of different sizes. And a lot of people use the Q-tips and just the Q-tips, but I like these for like doing little detail areas. So we go back to the PM. Dip your skewer in and just barely touch that, touch the surface of the PM. And whatever you do, don't get paint on your skewer before you put it in because that'll, that'll contaminate your, your PM solution. And I've already got my green out, I think, somewhere in here, this mess. And I do have that a little thick, but you get the idea. On. But there's also all those pencils. These have got tons of colored pencils over here. And I could use those too. I got, you know, and they, and they blend well too. I can actually use them to blend some of the oils in if I want to. Um, let's see. Another thing I want to do here, I'll put some white onto the, onto the white. It seems kind of silly to put white on white, but the white, it's titanium white, and it's kind of neat because it, it makes it a different kind of, it gives it sort of a, a diffused kind of whiteness. Instead of just being a white on the print, see how it kind of covers in some of the tones. And this, I didn't put the PM on just because I like it thick. So you get the general idea of what I'm doing here. Take another clean cotton swab and smooth it out a little bit. A little bit. What I'll do is, um, I'll finish this, the bottom part, I'll probably just finish up later. Early on I'd said that I was going to talk about the print in another video, but I think I'll do it right now because it's not going to take that long in another video. Nah, that's boring. Alright, so... I, this is a photograph that I took with a, using film with a plastic camera called um, Photomaster. And this is the Westport Maritime Museum. It's an old Coast Guard station. And the film got kind of warpy, so the image ended up warpy, and I kind of like that. But I printed this myself. You can use a coated paper, an RC paper, basically something that you get done commercially. Um, but it's... And you can force the oils to go on there. You don't use the PM solution, but it's frustrating because it wants to come right back off. So that's something to think about is the, is the print that you're working on. I have never really had good luck using inkjets, any kind of digital printing. Sometimes people do. I don't, I don't know, but um, I don't use the sprays or anything like that. I, I just use standard darkroom prints. And then there's here's something else, though. You can get these canvases done. Um, pretty reasonably at different places. Um, these I think are from Costco and you can actually uh, Tint on these with the oils the same way you do on on a fiber base print It's a little bit it kind of doesn't want to take it quite as well But um, it does it does work really well and that's something that's fun to do These are pinhole images that I did and I'll, I'll beat those. Is that something I like to do? Okay, I told you that you could remove the oil paints easily and I only showed you the kneadable eraser and uh, I need to show you something that's going to be life-changing life changing things. This is a product it's called Marlene or Super Marlene um, 
I think it's really just called Marlene now. Anyway, uh, you take one of these little tiny skewers. This is another reason that we made these. Open up your bottle of Super Marlene or Marlene. Touch it just a little tiny bit. You don't need a lot. You might need a little bit more than you do with a PM, so whatever. Another thing is put that lid on right away and tighten it down hard because this stuff evaporates faster than a shot of bourbon at the Merrill household. All right. I don't know if my phone's going to show you too well, but this, see, like, there's some blue in here that I don't necessarily want. Well, I could use that kneadable eraser and take that out, but I can also use the Marlene and just clean it right up like that. There goes. There's a few areas that I can do that in. There you go. Not earth-shaking print, but hey, it's kind of cool. Here's something else about the Marlene. And this, this is another life-changing part. Everybody's got some old family photo. Some little kid came along somewhere and put ballpoint pen on it. So what you do, you take your Marlene. At this point, you can use, you can make like a, a mop, practically. Get it good and wet. And, oh, to test on the corner of the print just to make sure you're not going to erase it. But this, well, I'd usually have it taped to a piece of cardboard. This is great stuff. It'll take it right off. Now that kid's not in trouble anymore for doing this when he was two years old. So there you go. We got this. And it dries really quickly. And if, the, if it's ballpoint and it was done pretty harshly, you're still going to have the scratches in the, in the surface. That one's not bad at all. So anyway, I think that's it.